coolest car you've ever driven or ridden in? My own, of course. It's <laughs> <laughs> the first car you ever owned. Yeah, I mean like the other one. With or without a license? Start without a license and then go to with. Without a license, I had a 1950 Ford Sunliner Flathead V8. <laughs> and you drove without a license? Absolutely, I was only 11, I couldn't get one. Do you have a distinctive memory about learning how to drive? Who taught you to drive? Or the first time you were allowed to drive alone? We actually had a, a bunch of us. When I was growing up in northwestern Connecticut, we had a group of kids, and we were all like 11 or 12 years old, and we had what we called uh, lot cars. Nothing registered, drive them out in the woods, used to build our own roads. <coughs> And uh, that's how we learned to drive, really. Kids teaching kids. Kids teaching kids. Hit a tree, back it up. What's the coolest car you've ever ridden in? A uh, Lamborghini Diablo. Where was that? Syracuse, New York. A friend of mine owned a couple of hotels up there. How fast did you go? Too fast. Too fast to be a passenger. Didn't get caught. No. Route 81 about 2 o'clock in the morning. About 165 miles an hour. I feel that right now. Scared okay. to death. Future cars, what's going to happen? Where are we going? Personally, I think where we're going is down the wrong road. All of this electric stuff, you know, I don't think it's right. Uh, we had cars in the 60s that give you 70 miles at a gallon. And they got pulled. This, I mean, this hybrid stuff, I don't believe in it. I don't like it. Uh, I guess I'm not a green guy, you know? Who taught you to drive, or do you have a distinctive memory about when you were learning how to drive, or the feeling when you were first out on your own? I do. Uh, I thought I had the bull by the horns. Uh, my father was uh, originally from Scotland and uh, had public transportation most of his life. Uh, immigrated to Canada and then went down to California and had me. He never really drove till he was about 40, uh, got his license. So he was a double pumped uh, driver. Uh, good driver but uh, you know kind of late in life to learn how to drive uh, so I figured being with my friends I knew how to drive and I remember taking it up a hill uh, with a river down below and a guardrail and him saying to slow down and me saying I've got it I've got it I, I know what I'm doing and spinning the car around and coming close to that guardrail so I calmed down after that and listened to my father more. <laughs> <laughs> car lust, what's the car that what's the car of your dreams that if somebody was going to buy you you'd get? Uh, I'd have to say uh, an Australian Ford Falcon. Uh, they made them up into like 76, right hand drive, Mad Max stuff. Kind of neat. Uh, uh, a late day muscle car uh, after, you know, muscle era was ended in the United States due to gas, gasoline, uh, you know, emissions and all that. Still carried on in Australia. What's the one that got away? The car you had that you missed that you, you wish you still had? Well, this one actually uh, got away from me. I had a tax problem in 1991 and I had to sell it. Uh, I didn't realize I could make a payment plan with the IRS. I unloaded it for $1,000. Uh, about seven years passed and I saw a young guy driving it. I was young too, but he was younger, high school. Said that he and his father were gonna restore it. Down the road it went. Um, Years go by, uh, I see it sitting at a garage for sale. Uh, I inquired about it. Uh, the guy said his father, I said I saw a kid driving it, and he said, yeah, his father hit a $4 million scratch ticket. Uh, they drive all new stuff. They just want to sell it. So what do you want for it? He says, $5,000. I didn't have $5,000. I'm a painter by trade, and I was painting a church, and I saw it for sale, and every day I'd see it, and one day it was gone. Up until about four years ago, uh, I was cutting through a town and I saw it parked next to a barn. 
I inquired about it, and a uh, lady said it was still for sale. They tried selling it in town. It never sold. I said, what did you want for it? They said, two grand, so I bought it back. So this is the one that got away, but I got it back. Can you tell me, do you have a distinctive memory of when you learned to drive or who taught you how to drive? Yeah, what you were, that what would you be my on? brother who was a hot rod guy and we would uh, strip some gears and he would do, uh, he was to come actually up this way to do drag racing. So I got introduced to, to that when I was in the back seat while being scared to death while he was racing his cars. And so I kind of got introduced to that. He liked taking cars apart and all that. So. Uh, kind of, uh, he was the one that taught me and got me into, you know, wanting to do things like that. But his were more of the cruiser hot rod type cars, which are very nice too, but they're different. So would you, you learn the most about driving by sitting in the back seat? Yeah, pretty much. You know, how to, uh, you know, run other people off the road and shoot out uh, street lights and all that. But no, car of my dreams would be, you know, probably a Duesenberg which is the rare kind that, they, that there are millions of dollars that you're not going to ever have. But I've been around them. I, I was, uh, was judge in the Classic Car Club of America, so I've judged them. I get to see them. I get to ride in them, but uh, usually I don't have a couple million dollars to buy one. So, uh, But they're beautiful. I mean, they're, like I said, they're all beautiful works of art, and uh, so I, I, like, I like any kind of car like that. What kind of car did you take to Lover's Lane? That would be that Ford. Yeah, I don't know if the Ford went. I don't know if I always went, but the Ford went. <laughs> <laughs> so the first question is, what's the first car you ever owned? Ever owned was a 1964 Chevy Impala. What color? It was navy blue with light blue interior. Yeah, it was gorgeous. Four barrel. It sucked gas. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the coolest car you've ever ridden in? <gasps> oh. Can I say the, the pack? <laughs> yeah. Uh, a 1925 Packard limousine. Where were you? Oh, it was at my house for a while until it went to his brother's house in Wisconsin. His brother owns it, so. And we, we sat in the back, my sister-in-law and I, we perfected the, we, the queen's wave. <laughs> <That's> Beautiful. <nice. laughs> What's the car you missed the most and wish you still had? The, 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 the what, was it a 79? Was Peachy a 79? Yeah. Yeah, 78. The, the 78, 1978 bug convertible that burned. I never drove it. I never even sat in it. We only owned it a month. And it caught fire and burned and I want it back. <laughs> Someday, maybe. Peachy? Peachy, yeah. The, it was, Aww. what was the color? Peach metallic. Peach metallic was the color of the car. It was a gorgeous kind of a rusty, reddish, you know, with white top, white interior. And within that 15 sounds... minutes, it was all gone. Oh. Do you have a, do either of you have a distinctive memory about learning to drive? Well, when I went to get my license, I went through two stop signs, so I didn't get that the first time. <laughs> my my father had a faithful employee named Vic Townsend, and he taught me and my three brothers and my sister all how to drive. We, uh, we'd we stop in the railroad crossing, but we'd pull all the way onto the railroad tracks, and it made him a little nervous. <laughs> what kind of car did you learn in? Pickup trucks. Three on the floor? Three on the tree. Three. <laughs> That's what mine is. Do you guys name your cars? Uh, no. No. I named a dump truck once because I bought it from a 90-year-old woman named Gert. What's the car of your dreams or car that you're less than after? I would like a 1968 Dodge Charger but they're hard to find. Any got... color? Green. I saw one when I was in the service. It was either by that or getting married. I got married. Still married, same woman, no car. <laughs> Probably a good investment right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the first car I ever owned was a 1940 Ford two-door deluxe. 
I bought it in 1965 when I was 18 years old. That was the first of many. I've had 268 cars, trucks, and motorcycles. What's the coolest car you've ever ridden in? Um, my memory goes back to 1965. I was working at the Ford dealership, <clears throat> and in the next city there was a Griffith dealer. Uh, a Griffith was a TVR from England that was modified by the by uh, the the Griffith Ford dealership in Long Island. They put a Ford V8 in that little bitty car, and so I delivered parts to them. And the guy says, "Do you want to go for a ride?" And what 18-year-old kid would say no? It was very, very fast. <laughs> what is the car of your dreams, or car you've been less than after? The BMW Z3. Really? Why is that? There was two gorgeous blondes in it. <laughs> What's the car you miss the most and wish you still had? My father's 1947 KBA International truck. Why do you wish you still had it? I was two years old when he brought it home with my mother's name painted on the front bumper. And what do you think the car of the future is going to look like? I don't want to know. <laughs> so what's the first car you ever owned? The first car I ever owned was a Pinto hatchback, bronze with an eight track, which I thought was very cool. <laughs> they don't do a lot of bronze no. anymore. I don't think they do a lot of, the, you don't see a lot of Pintos anymore. <laughs> I'm sure there's a reason for that, yeah. but I felt very cool at the time. And then my mother always had station wagons. I can remember um, back when we could drive without um, seat belts, getting to come home from town and being the eldest, usually you got to be the one that was picked first and she would sit next to you and you'd get to the corner from your house and you'd get to drive from the corner to the house. So it was very, um, very, very fun and made you feel very mature to be able to do that. So it, it, that, that would have been the first time, probably driving at about 10, 11 years old. I mean, Today, I guess you don't do that, but out in the hills of Kansas, we did a lot of things you don't do today. <laughs> What's the coolest car you've ever ridden in or driven? Uh, oh, I got to think about that one. Um, actually, I have a one of the first Mustangs. I have a 64 and a half Mustang convertible that's fully restored, so I guess that would be the neatest one. Tell me about this car. Uh, this is a uh, 1978 Mustang II Cobra II. Um, it's a unique car because during the gas crisis of the uh, 1970s, they started uh, making the cars a lot smaller. So in 1973, the Mustangs were a pretty big gas guzzling type of car, and in 74, they you know, designed this new Mustang too. It was so different from the previous Mustangs that they had a, uh, you know, they were compelled to call it a Mustang too. So it was actually the car people loved to hate because it was so different than the previous Mustangs, but it actually sold 1.1 million. They sold 1.1 million of these in five years. So even though people didn't like them, they still bought them. How many do you think are left? Um, you know, there's a, there's, there's a very loyal following with them. Um, a lot of them rusted out. A lot of them were junk just for the front suspension, the street rotters like the, um, the front suspension and rack and pinion steering system. So years ago, they they would take those out and then junk the rest of the car. So, but there's still a few around. I learned how to drive from a man who owned a student driver company for, he must have owned it for 50 years. I think they made him stop. He was still doing it about, until about two years ago. 
Well, I'll tell you, I was 12 years old and my uncle lived in Brattleboro, Vermont. And at that point, I was getting interested in cars and my uncle said, I'm gonna bring you to go see Dr. Elmer Bemis, a pretty famous surgeon in Brattleboro, Vermont. And he had a 1905 Model K Ford. And uh, we went over to his house and uh, he allowed me to get in the car and he took me for a short ride around the neighborhood. And from that point on, I was hooked on antique cars. The really neat thing about this story is that last year, I was at a, uh, a tour with my Model T Ford and I saw a blue antique car go by and I said to myself, that's a Model K Ford and come to find out it was a car that was on the tour and the gentleman who had just purchased it from a fellow in California told me it was Elmer Bemis's car. The coolest car I ever rode in when I was 16, I had a friend that owned a 63 Corvette and at that time that was really something and I used to ride around with him all the time in that thing. I always wished it was mine and I still wish it was mine. <laughs> but the coolest car I ever owned is the one I have now which is a 1971 Mach 1 Mustang and I have a lot of fun driving that. It makes me feel like I'm having a, like the old days. Brings you back to Brings you back to was, high school, yeah. Yeah. It's the car you miss the most and wish you still had. <laughs> a Dodge Omni. Really? <laughs> yeah. It was a it was like driving a cinder block with wheels. You couldn't kill it. And I tried my best to kill it. And it just wouldn't die. So I eventually just quit driving it. But it was great. It didn't have a radio, so I sang to myself and had a good time in it. So uh, a little strange, but yeah, a Dodge Omni. <laughs>